There we go. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to um, the afternoon session on the MPH program in epidemiology at the Dalawana School of Public Health. Okay, so um, my name is uh, Jennifer Brooks, and I'm an assistant professor of epidemiology, and I'm also the program director of the MPH epidemiology program. Um, and we're also really in, uh, fortunate to have two of our upper year students on the Zoom call today who can help any sort of help answer any student specific questions or questions about student experience and that type of thing um, that you might have. So um, the basic um, overview of this talk will be, um, I'm just going to give you a very, very quick one slide introduction to what epidemiology is anyway, just so you uh, know what it is that you're thinking of doing here. Uh, I'm going to talk about how our program works, uh, what to expect, and then we'll go over how to apply and application requirements. Okay. Um, and so I will go over the program and then I will stop and I'll take questions about that. And then I'll go over how to apply and we can stop and take questions about that. Okay. All right, so uh, what is epidemiology anyway? Um, probably more people these days have an idea of what an epidemiologist does than um, any other time um, because of, well, the global pandemic that we find ourselves in. We now epidemiology and epidemiologists are in and on the news all the time. Um, but epidemiology is not just the study of COVID. <laughs> it is really, um, there's a lot of definitions out there, but this one I think captures it, uh, captures it for me in that it's the study of the distribution and determinants of health related states or events in populations and the application of this work to control health problems. And so it's a very broad definition that really speaks I think to what is so exciting about epidemiology is that it provides you the foundation uh, for methods and statistics that will allow you then to provide, uh, apply those skills to whatever sort of health state or health problem that you want to, um, that you want to look at. So this means that the goals or the objectives of epidemiology are really um, wide varying um, and of course are not limited to these few points, but uh, this is just meant to give you an idea of the type of work that we do as epidemiologists. So we might study the natural course of disease from onset to, onset to resolution, determine the extent of disease in a population and any patterns or trends of that occurrence within the population. We can identify causes of disease. And we also do work that evaluates the effectiveness of measures that prevent or treat a disease. Sort of central to this is really uh, looking at how disease is distributed in a population and then the factors that influence or determine that distribution. And those factors and those outcomes can be lots of different things. So the goal of our program is really to um, emphasize quantitative method methods, your ability to um, critically evaluate evidence, um, to analyze data, interpret outcomes, and then to apply that to lots of different settings. So we are preparing you to be part of a research group or public health practice. Um, you can uh, uh, have a focus on methodological and analytical techniques. You can look at trends and patterns of disease. You will be able to critically review peer reviewed literature and understand and critique that literature in order to assess impact. Um, and, you know, you will be introduced to basic public health principles and practice um, and then applied epidemiological skills, which is really sort of in the realm of research. So the program um, actually can be summarized really on one slide, and I'm just going to walk you through this. Uh, let me just get my laser pointer here. So if we start in your first year, your fall 2021, winter 2022, this is really a time where most of the courses that you're taking are required courses. And this is really providing you with the foundational skills that you need. 
So you take courses in epi methods and biostatistics and so on. And the purpose is to give you this foundation of skills that then can be applied to your core practicum experience, which takes place in the summer of your first year. So this is really um, the cornerstone of our program where you get to go and have real world, real life experience working with data on real health problems. Um, and when you come back from that practicum, you've already, you've completed all of your required courses. And so now this is a time to really explore or specialize. So you can take advanced courses um, where you learn um, advanced quantitative methods. You can take content specific courses um, and it really sort of allows you to um, follow your interests and your career goals. So if you're interested in infectious disease, you can take more courses in that, in genetics, in social determinants of health, mental health, whatever it might be, we have the electives for that. And then in the winter term, you can either choose to continue to take uh, electives or you can take an optional second practicum. And I would say that the majority of our students do opt into taking the, um, the second practicum. They find these experiences very rewarding. And then the majority of our students graduate in June of their second year. Okay, so the timeline looks a little bit like this. Um, these are your required courses in your first fall term. Um, everybody in all the programs in Dalalana takes an intro to public health course, um, which really gives you an idea of the breadth of work that's done at Dalalana and all the different ways that are, we are impacting health um, in Canada and internationally. You then have your required courses, your Biostats 1, Epi Methods 1, Population Perspectives, um, and then there's a core policy course as well. So these courses, this is considered, um, these are your required courses and you can uh, choose to take an elective then or not. Okay, then the winter term really builds solidly on that first term where you take a second biostats and a second epi methods course. And then you cover a course related to surveillance and um, critical appraisal. The rest really after that is up to you. So once you've completed those first two terms, you've completed all of the required courses. Um, so now um, you can decide where you wanna go. What are you interested in? What skills do you wanna develop? And really you, if you're interested in social determinants of health, infectious disease, infant maternal health, global health, AI and health or artificial intelligence and health, aging, chronic disease and multimorbidity, methods, genetics, cancer, health policy, health behavior, and so on and so on. Um, there are courses for you. Um, and you know, I couldn't fit all of the different areas that are on here, but one of the things that is really attractive, attracted me to epidemiology was that I was provided the training in methods and quantitative skills um, to then apply them to whatever sort of scenario I was interested in. And this has allowed my interest to, to evolve and change over my career as my life priorities change and as the world changes around us. I'm not a chronic disease epidemiologist, but I'm not an infectious disease epidemiologist, but I'm doing work on COVID-19, for example. And that's because I have a foundational um, uh, foundation in epi methods. So the first place that you really get to decide what you want to do um, and can really influence um, your experience is with this first practicum. So the first summer practicum is mandatory, as I mentioned, and then you have the opportunity to complete a second one that's optional in your second year. So we coordinate these with you. Um, we have a online job posting system where we post positions um, this is internal and it's just for current MPH students. And even um, at a time where um, everything was in last spring and summer, where everything was shifting from being in person and online and everybody was readjusting their work, we still had um, more positions than students. So, um, you know, we really um, 
this is a really great opportunity to get some real world experience. Now we also, besides helping you find a position, um, we also help you with professional development opportunities um, in sort of how you, how you get that position. So we talk to you about how to draft a cover letter, how to um, create a CV, how to carry out an interview and so on. So that first practicum, that first summer required practicum, um, this one has to uh, be a specific type. So it needs to have you applying quantitative skills and then writing those results up and communicating them, all right? These can happen in lots of different professional or research settings. Um, and most EPI students will receive a small stipend for that work. The optional second practicum, which as I said, most students actually do, um, is an opportunity to either, you know, you could try something totally new. So if you were in a research setting here at a university, you might use this one to go and work at a public health agency or public health unit to get a different type of experience. Or you can actually um, return to the same mentor and get sort of an extended, more in-depth experience. Um, with that particular, with that particular um, mentor. Um, in past years, only the second practicum could be outside Canada. Um, this is not happening this year. I don't know for next year um, what's happening, of course. We'll have to sort of roll with what happens um, as, we, as the pandemic evolves. So really it's these, um, the combination of your, the practicum opportunities that you seek out, and then your elective courses that allows you to really pursue any combination of these different areas that you, that you want. And as I said, we really start off by providing this foundation in methods that then can be applied across lots of different settings. So this is a graph that's just meant to give you an idea of where our graduate students end up. Uh, a lot of them end up working for government at the provincial or the federal or local um, public health um, level. Um, we do have some, I would say that this, this area is growing a little bit. This private sector consulting um, is growing a little bit. And then we do have those that go on and pursue higher education. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a moment and just see if there are any questions. So if you have any questions about the program, uh, not about the application, uh, cause I'm just, I will go over that next, then you can put your question into the chat and I will do my best to answer it. Okay, so if there's not, um, if there's not any questions right now, then I will move on to help. Oh, there's a question. <laughs> Sorry, maybe I didn't give you enough time to type. What determines whether or not students complete the program in 16 months versus 20 months? So you need to complete 10 FCEs. So each of those courses that I listed are worth 0 0.5. So part of it is just course load and when you take your electives, uh, electives tend to be offered in the same term every year, right? So you might want, you might end up spacing things out. Sometimes people, um, yeah, have, uh, they want to take extra courses. Your tuition covers all the way through to the fall, um, even though, so most students will graduate in June, um, but uh, you can continue to take courses all you want all summer as well. So some other students um, will, uh, yeah, it, it just ends up with um, delaying different aspects of things like they may not take a course or because they have other uh, responsibilities. So then they're making up another course at another time. So, but I would say the majority of our students graduate in June of their second year. Any other questions before I go on to the application process? Okay. Okay, so first of all, the application deadline is January 18th. 
Um, and this application has these six main components. Um, and I'm gonna go over each of these um, uh, as we go through this presentation. Okay, so your letter of intent. This, in my opinion, is a really, really integral part of your application. This is your chance to really tell us why you are applying to this program, what your goals are, how this program fits in with those goals, um, and really tells us like something about you and why this is the program for you. So this is a free form essay. It shouldn't be, you know, about two pages, single space. Um, and, and this is sort of the most personal part of the application, right? So this is a chance for you to tell us something about the motivation per, for pursuing a degree um, in epidemiology. Now your, your CV, um, you know, should include these sort of basic headings. These are typical for an academic CV. Now we understand that given your career stage, you may not have publications and presentations or experience teaching, um, but this is a place to highlight other employment, volunteer experiences, um, you know, if you can highlight opportunities where, for where you were um, uh, that highlight leadership skills or communication skills, the, this is sort of the place to do that as well. Okay, now in terms of eligibility with respect to your undergraduate training, this is for all graduate programs at the University of Toronto. So this is not a Dalalana requirement. This is a School of Graduate Studies requirement that all um, you must have an undergraduate honors degree, um, a four-year program of progressively more advanced study. And this is really key. We don't, we, we, do, we look at the courses that you're taking. So um, when we're looking at this minimum academic standing, what we're actually focusing on is the, your five most uh, recent senior level courses, okay? And these are, in these courses, you need to have um, at least a mid B standing. Um, and, um, you know, we want to see that these are 400, 300, 400 level courses, okay? This should not be, um, they really need to be advanced level courses. So a stronger academic uh, record um, is, is likely needed to be competitive. We expect mostly A's and B's, but we also will, um, uh, you know, we also are, are cognizant of, you know, an ever increasing trajectory. So if you, your grades started off not as strong, but we see a steady increase in your grades over time, as you progress to senior courses, then that will also be noted as a strength. Um, so we're interested in seeing courses that show that you have quantitative skills, so in math and statistics, um, uh, also courses with um, that can show that you have some sort of like skills in terms of communication, written or oral communication, and so on. But we do, and we do review your entire academic record, so you should submit all transcripts, okay? So one of the program specific requirements is a statistics course that must be at least one term long university course. Um, and you need to get a minimum grade of a B plus in this course. And you, it needs to um, address at a minimum these topics. And these are listed on the Dalana website. And it is your responsibility to show very clearly to the admissions committee that your course or courses, sometimes this is achieved over multiple courses and that's fine, that uh, covers all of this material, okay? So when you're completing your stats requirement, um, you will need to include the names of the courses that uh, this content was covered in, as well as the syllabus from that course to show us um, that this content was actually covered. So the other sort of program specific requirement is this, um, you know, we will be reviewing your application to show that you can communicate effectively, that you're professional, you're showing maturity, you show knowledge and interest in human health and um, determinants of health. 
um, and really that you have a clear interest in epidemiology um, specifically. Okay. So for the stats requirement, it's really important that you make sure that all of this is very clear. Um, you know, you will indicate the course code uh, or the name of the course that this information was covered in. And then you can uh, attach also the syllabus or it could be a statement of content from your stats professor, um, whatever it might be. And, you know, one tip is to sort of create this stats, a stats document that is a multi-page PDF document that includes everything um, about your stats requirement. Um, and so if you have multiple courses, include those courses, okay? And it's important to identify the relevant courses because the name of the course may not be so intuitive. intuitive. You may have taken a community health course or a community medicine course where uh, some of those concepts were introduced for you. So for internationally trained students, we also have a requirement for English language proficiency. proficiency. And there's lots of information about this on the SGS website. Um, and um, you need to make sure that those cars are submitted, scores are submitted with the application at the time of the deadline. Otherwise, it'll be considered incomplete. Um, now, uh, through this link here, there are tons of resources for international students who are applying and had their training at an international institution. It includes sort of a translation of grades. So what your GPA is at um, your international institution, what that equates to at U of T to determine your um, eligibility as well. So the admissions committee really considers that full package. So we look at every piece of, um, that, uh, of information that you apply to us. So we're looking uh, for quantitative skills, for any sort of experience in research or um, interested in health field. And that can be through the courses that you've taken, through volunteer opportunities, through whatever it might be. Um, you need to show that you have some human health knowledge, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that your degree has to be in um, biology, for example. Um, we have students that have lots of different backgrounds. But what should come across is that you are mature, professional, and that you um, really are a, a good match for our program. So we want to make sure that what we are providing in the program really aligns and meets with your stated uh, career goals. Um, and uh, so really making sure that you're a good fit. So there are lots of different ways you can show evidence of your prior experience. These could be in your uh, CV with uh, like other employment um, experience offices that you might have, but also in your letter of intent, um, sort of when you can state your interest or your motivation for wanting to uh, apply to an epidemiology program. Um, we will look at, um, your past behavior and choices to show that you have um, an interest in epidemiology, right? So if there's no human health courses, there's no human health volunteer experiences, there's no quantitative um, experience, then we, we, we will question that A, you know what epidemiology is and that really this is the fit for you, right? So you really need to make the case that this is what you wanna do and that this is the program that you wanna be in. So to apply, the first thing is to do your research and you're here, so that is a good start, right? Um, to learn about the program, look at other programs, look at the other MPH programs that we offer at the Alana and sort of reflect on what it is that you are looking to accomplish. What are your goals? The other um, piece of advice I can give you is to really take the time to plan out your application and give yourself adequate time to prepare the different components. Um, uh, you know, give your chance to give yourself a chance to draft the letter of intent and then maybe step away from it and come back and read it and look. You will also need to ensure that you give your references enough time to complete um, their letter um, because um, 
from experience, we get multiple requests of these things. And so you don't want to end up requesting too late and then they're just too busy in order to get the letter in. And the other piece I can say is to make sure you follow all instructions. So if you have missing information, um, you know, your transcripts aren't there, your, your staff requirement is not clear, um, your application will not even get forwarded to the review committee. Um, everything gets reviewed first by the graduate office um, and only complete applications are moved forward, okay? So um, just make your best possible impression of, and it, using all of the different um, components of the application. So there's lots and lots of information on the Dalana website about our program. There is a course database where you could go and search all the courses that are offered and read um, read about what's what you know what's included in those courses. And then there are also um, lots of different people that you can reach out to if you have questions. Um, so I'm going to stop my share right now um, so I can see everybody. Um, and um, we can just, I'll take some questions. It can be about um, either the program or about how to apply.